we'll start our the first study for for 2022 yeah let's celebrate uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, you've already seen the topic for today so uh, we'll start with celebration so yes but uh, yeah thank you again all of you for joining i'm presuming that maybe a few more will join as we go along uh, but yeah what a year it has been uh, so we let's hope that 22 will at least bring uh, some respite from this whole thing. So happy new year to every one of you. If, I, if uh, you know, uh, some of you have not been wished by me, God bless you all, right? Very good. So I think it is Vanessa who's joined us. Hello, Vanessa. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> uh, let's begin our uh, study today. Uh, and I think it is only right for us to ask Praveen to lead us in prayer as he has always been doing. And uh, maybe it'll be good for me to also mention if uh, Sachin is going to stay with us, I hope you're not busy, uh, then you can close in prayer, Sachin. Thank you. So let's begin then. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to thy presence, Lord, with heart full of gratitude. Lord, thank you very much for your faithfulness throughout the year 2021. You kept us safe and sound and uh, you kept the spirit in us that we should continue our Bible study. Throughout the year, we could meet together and encourage one another, Lord, and learn about your word. And uh, especially, uh, we could know more about you and we could experience you more intimately, Lord. We believe that Bible study in 2021 was a great blessing in our lives. Lord, we are, as we entered the new year, we are looking forward for another year of uh, blessing and your revelation and illumination, illumination, Lord. Bless us together as body of Christ. Lord, strengthen us, help us so that we may continue the same, continue this, uh, continue attending the spirit, uh, Bible study without losing the interest and spirit. Lord, I ask you to reveal yourself to us as we discuss many more topics this year. We need your leading and guidance, Lord. Ultimately, we need your revelation, which brings us closer to you. And we need you in our discussions, Lord. As we start our first Bible study, I ask, uh, I ask you to help us to open our hearts and minds so that we may be able to receive and perceive what you want to communicate to us through your servant, Lord. Everything we do and our discussions may be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, uh, Praveen, for leading us in that prayer. And as we begin, let me also welcome Sarita, who's joined us. I'm sure, not sure if Sarita or Ajay, but, uh, and Om Prakash, who's joined us. Uh, thank you for attending study today. Uh, Good evening. You know, yeah, it is Sarita. Good evening, Pastor. Good evening, good evening. Hello, everyone. I'll just... Right. Uh, I just wanted to uh, mention that, uh, obviously, if we want to continue to make Bible study as much of a blessing as it is possible with us, as we are led by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I uh, certainly, you know, I'm grateful that God has given me the strength to sustain most of it last year. I'm hoping my team will help me this year and uh, we can bring in the team to also bring in, you know, a the various aspects of scripture. And uh, in fact, uh, I wanted to discuss it with Praveen and, uh, and, and I'm sure uh, Sachin can help me also here. Uh, how do we plan out the year? We were supposed to have a meeting where we would discuss all of this, but we had to postpone the whole thing because of uh, the pandemic. <clears throat> but uh, I'm just hoping that we can do a uh, uh, good, you know, rich, uh, in-depth, systematic study of the scriptures. And so maybe we'll do some planning on that. So maybe another two more, sun, uh, two more Wednesdays and I should be done with the series I started some months back on spiritual discipline. So today we will continue with that series. Uh, and today our topic is the spiritual discipline of celebration. 
uh, I don't think normally we would associate celebration as a spiritual discipline. For us, spiritual disciplines are all very serious, and, you know, very uh, something that we uh, don't smile and laugh at, you know. But it's amazing how uh, we, you know, we've been led to understand that even celebration is part of the Christian life, the, the, the Christian walk, and it goes deeper into the God we worship. Who is this God we worship who not only accepts celebration, encourages celebration, but like I will conclude uh, later on, he is celebration himself. And so that is uh, something extremely interesting. So this uh, concept of celebration or the spiritual discipline of celebration is a recurring theme in the Bible. And I would say it is part of the biggest story of our triune God. And uh, that's what I'm hoping that I could capture through some of the scriptures I'll refer to. Uh, and so today, it's just going to be just an exposure to celebration. There is so much we can talk about it, but obviously uh, we don't have time to do that. So I'm going to go and look into the scriptures as to how the scriptures uh, sort of uh, portray celebration. And then a small section on why should we practice spirit, the spiritual discipline of celebration. Okay. Now, talking about celebration, we just remember, uh, you know, the recent celebration that we've had, which is part of the big story of God. Uh, and we call it the Advent, or you can call it, uh, you know, of course, most popularly called Christmas the Christmas season, but the Advent, you know, unfolds over four Sundays. And uh, let me read to you part of that uh, story that brings in this concept of celebration. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 10. It says, and of course, very familiar to all of us, do not be afraid as the angel, uh, uh, you know, uh, brings this good news. Uh, it go, he goes on to say, I bring you good news that will cause great joy. Notice great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth to those on whom his favor rests. So isn't that interesting that we pick up these aspects of great joy over the good news that is being announced and uh, the entire, I mean, or, or it says a great company. I don't know, their number is not given. A great company of the heavenly host, but I would, I would, I would say in the millions, perhaps, you know, uh, the heavenly host appearing and praising God. Isn't that celebration, right? In other words, celebration in heaven, celebration in heaven, inviting the shepherds or humanity into a celebratory attitude, a mood, celebration, uh, you know, uh, God wanting humanity to join the celebration. Uh, and so, uh, as we noticed in Luke chapter 2, the concept of great joy and praise, praise, all of these goes hand in hand with celebration as we can understand it from the scriptures. Joy leads to celebration. You know, every time there's an occasion of joy, we need to celebrate. And interestingly enough, celebration produces more joy. And so it is a, I would say, a glorious cycle or a circle of living, of living life in its fullness. Joy giving rise to celebration and celebration increasing that joy. And that is the circle of life that our triune God lives in. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along. You know, the discipline of celebration, uh, as we will continue to see through the scriptures, is essential for life. 
So celebration is something that we are called into, we are led into, we are encouraged into. Richard Foster, who is uh, now an author that we should be knowing by now because he is one of those who writes about spiritual disciplines quite a bit. And I've referred to his name on many occasions, but he, he puts it this way. He says, celebration is central to all spiritual disciplines. Without a joyful spirit of festivity, the disciplines become dull, death breathing tools in the hands of modern Pharisees. Very interesting uh, thought that he, that he uh, you know, brings about by this uh, quotation. He's basically saying that all spiritual disciplines uh, needs to be done through an attitude of celebration. He says celebration is central to all the spiritual disciplines. In other words, all disciplines to be done with a sense of joy. And why is that? Because spiritual disciplines become or should become celebrated. It should have a festive aspect to it. In other words, if I can uh, look at the flip side, it's not to be turned into legalism, which unfortunately many, you know, uh, many would, and especially the Pharisees would make it into. All the disciplines become so legalistic and every time it becomes legalistic, it becomes dull and boring. Like uh, Richard uh, Foster says, uh, and, uh, it, it, and it can become burdensome. Spiritual disciplines become burdensome once the joy from it is taken away. And that's the reason why he says celebration is central to all spiritual disciplines. So in other words, every spiritual discipline is a celebration of our new life in Jesus, whether it is praying, whether it is, a, it is fasting, and even fasting can be in one sense a celebration, whether it is worship, uh, whether it is, you know, confession or all of those spiritual disciplines that we talked about, we need to bring in a, 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 an element of celebration into it. Then it does not turn into a legalistic, burdensome activity. All right. Having said that, obviously, when we talk about celebration uh, from a scriptural perspective, today's hectic, stressful, violent world, I think lost has lost that sense of celebration, a celebration in its true sense. Yes, there is celebration in the world, but uh, they don't experience the joy of celebration. Celebration becomes just a big hangover. Every time you have celebration, you, you experience hangovers rather than be re-energized. Let me quote another author, Harvey Cox. He says the following, modern man has been pressed so hard toward useful work and rational calculation, he has all but forgotten the joy of ecstatic celebration. Once again, interesting point there. Modern man, so filled with anxiety, cares, the cares of life and the pressure to achieve, to perform. Uh, they, you know, uh, had, uh, in this attitude or frame of mind, they have exchanged genuine celebration to cheap pleasure, right? That only indulge the flesh. And that is a celebration that is not recognized in the scriptures. The scriptures enjoy or bring in celebration or talk about celebration from a holistic perspective where you involve, yes, the physical, but there is the emotional and the spiritual and the relational. And that kind of celebration does not lead to hangovers. But today's celebration is all uh, just an indulgence of the flesh, which unfortunately does not give us the strength to carry on. In fact, celebrations, you know, uh, lead us into a downward spiral, uh, unfortunately. So coming back to the Bible now, Celebration, let's look at celebration in the Bible. I'm going to pick up some thoughts uh, from the scriptures that brings in this element of celebration, you know, like I said, as a recurring theme 
through all of the scriptures. Uh, it is a theme of celebration from beginning to end. Now, obviously, I don't have time to go through every one of those uh, celebratory perspectives in the scriptures, but I'm going to pick up a few. And I'm going to begin, let me begin at the very beginning. And uh, interestingly enough, I'm going to go to the book of Job, chapter 38. And if you remember the story of Job, uh, you know, finally, God answers the, uh, the, the, the questions that Job has been putting. And, uh, and of course, uh, God comes out with some very stiff questions for Job. But notice one interesting thought we can pick up in Job 38 and verse 4. And let me read to you as I give you that context. He's talking about, you know, uh, how God is indeed, he, he's, he's exposing or he's showing his sovereignty. He says in verse 4, where were you talking to Job when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? Now notice what it says in verse 6 and 7. Or what were its bases sunk? Or, or who laid, laid its cornerstone? He's talking about you know, the beginning of the universe. Verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. When, you know, I mean, notice the morning stars, I'm presuming it is a reference to maybe angelic hosts. Uh, there is no specific, uh, you know, reference there, but we, we can surmise that it could be angelic hosts. And it talks about the sons of God. Uh, even angels can be, you know, termed sons of God. Shouted for joy. In other words, a moment of celebration when the universe came into existence. And I would say uh, even greater was the celebration when the earth came into existence uh, and life began to come as God breathed life into, especially humanity. All right. There was such a celebration. As it says, morning stars sang together. The sons of God shouted for joy. So in other words, uh, at the very beginning of the universe, there was you know, a, a, a celebratory attitude, a celebratory moment. And of course, the whole creation story is a story of celebration. If you remember reading through Genesis chapter 1 and 2, the creation story, God declares, and God saw that it was good. Every time, you know, he repeats that several times. God saw that it was good. In other words, the creation was a moment of celebration. Every time something came into existence, it was a moment of celebration. You know, it's like <laughs> the gardening that I do in my backyard. Every time, you know, I have the opportunity to go in the backyard and uh, tinker around and... Uh, uh, and I see something budding and growing and uh, I, I carefully, you know, nurture it. I transform it into a little, you know, safe place, into a pot. I stand back and I look at it. I think it's a moment of celebration. I, I can't help but think of God just standing back and looking at the universe coming into existence, well, whatever way it was done. But that was a moment of joy for God. Right, And in Genesis 1 and 31, an even greater moment of joy. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. Not just good and you all know that what it is referring to. It was the creation of man. When man came into existence, God declared it was very good. In other words, to me, this uh, points to the fact that God <coughs> himself is a celebrating God. God himself celebrates. You know, uh, God is a celebrating God. Let me read you a verse from Zephaniah in uh, my, the Minor Prophets, chapter 3, verse 17. It says, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. And notice this, very interesting. He will rejoice over you. With gladness, 
he will quiet you by his love he will exult over you with loud singing i wouldn't be surprised if father son holy spirit was singing with joy when they saw adam and eve finally you know united in the garden of eden god himself celebrates and he celebrates by singing he exults over it and he is uh, uh, his heart is filled with gladness if we can metaphorically talk of it in that manner so just as god you know celebrates humanity he is celebrating over humanity isn't that interesting that he allows us to celebrate in we sing and celebrate our god of great glory isn't it in fact the psalmist you know describes the joyful celebration if especially if you read the later part of the psalm the, the other the, the, the you know the, the closing parts of the psalm especially psalm 150 he invites people into a celebratory mood the celebration with timbrel and dance and trumpet and lute and harp with strings and pipe and loud clashing cymbals who said that only the piano should be played in church <laughs> right there are people who still think that only the piano is you know the right instrument but here we have uh, all of the instruments praising god and used for praising god all right uh so the celebration is just being with each other right and that is the power of relationship and that that god would celebrate not only his relationship we will talk about that in a while uh, but also allowing us that celebratory you know uh, uh drawing us into that celebration and celebrate him just as god celebrates us and that is something which has come into sharper focus for me we only think of worship as celebrating god but god actually celebrates us and he exults and praises over us and sings a song for us is that wonderful so coming talking about celebration again that's why god's word the bible commands us to celebrate and of course let me just pick up just two thoughts from the scriptures there are, there are several more in exodus chapter 12 and verse 14 it says this is a day you are to commemorate commemorate for the generations to come you shall celebrate as it as a festival to the lord a lasting ordinance obviously he was talking about the passover and it was a moment of celebration unfortunately it was also a moment of grief and gloom for those who have chosen to be against god but the passover was a symbol of redemption of freedom and that should be a moment of joy it's a moment of celebration and that's the reason why in philippians 4 the apostle tells us rejoice in the lord always i will say it again rejoice so there is this uh you know this uh, uh not only just an encouragement but almost uh, uh, you know a uh, a command to come into a celebratory mood uh especially at certain times of the year when we celebrate uh our redemption and the great works of the lord the year of the jubilee is something that i'm sure you are all familiar with that was a celebration a celebration of gracious of the gracious provision of god debts were cancelled slaves were set free no crops were being planted to let the earth rest property was being returned to its original owner it was a moment of a freedom of redemption from you know a certain sense of burden that people suffered through that was a moment of celebration all right so i've just picked up a few thoughts where god brings in this entire concept of celebration and the aspect of celebration into uh you know uh, uh make it live for us and Uh, i just want to drop down and go right to the very end i remember i uh showed you how god celebrates at the very beginning of creation now notice a great celebration coming at the very end of the era the present era that we know 
which will finally give rise to the uh, to the fullness of life, the kingdom of God, as we would say, the marriage of the supper of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb in Revelation 19. Isn't that a great moment of celebration? Let me read to you Revelation 19 and verse 6. Uh, six onwards, it says, Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude. And uh, notice these uh, very interesting words that are captured for us uh, in the scripture. Notice it says, seemed to be like the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. I mean, uh, the roar of many waters, mighty peals of thunder can sound like very, you know, sounds very frightening. But no, in the context, this is a praise. This is for the praise of such a glorious event. And which is, of course, the marriage supper of the Lamb, the marriage of the Lord Almighty, you know, with his bride who has made herself ready. Obviously, this is a reference to Jesus Christ and the church. Metaphorically speaking, the relationship is like the marriage, which is the highest, the most intimate relationship on a human plane between husband and wife. And God is using that metaphor to show that one day we will experience the most intimate of relationship with Jesus Christ and being in Jesus Christ with Father, Son, and perhaps with the entire heavenly hosts. Here it says, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Not that he was not reigning before, but perhaps he's saying, now humanity has accepted that reign. Today, so much of humanity rejects his reign. But perhaps it's an indication that now the reign has been accepted by all of humanity as we move into the fullness of life. So notice the beginning of creation. There is such joy and celebration. We see how God celebrates over the creation of man. He sings to, you know, in that celebration. And finally, the marriage supper of the Lamb, there is great celebration. And no wonder why the very presence of the Holy Spirit in us, as we are told in the, uh, uh, in the book of Galatians, is actually a celebration. You remember the fruit of the, the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is love and it manifests itself. The next word is joy, isn't it? Uh, joy is a celebratory uh, you know, attitude. It is something that brings a sense of tremendous well-being from deep within us. And the Holy Spirit produces that sense of celebration in us. In other words, we are basically celebrating the goodness of God in us. Okay, so I hope you begin to see how the scriptures are stamped by the concept of celebration, the attitude of celebration, the, the very reality of celebration, how God himself is celebratory uh, and he invites us into celebration and in one sense he commands us to celebrate. I move to uh, the next part, which I will take a short moment to, uh, 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 to explain. And the question here I ask is, why should we then practice the spiritual discipline of celebration? Right? And uh, I'm just limiting myself to two points that I would like to bring out. And then I will conclude with a Trinitarian perspective of celebration. Uh, going to the uh, question, why practice the spiritual discipline of celebration? And the first point I'd like to bring out is that the very act of celebration or celebrating when we do it 
like for example when we come for worship or we enjoy the communion together or we you know enjoy the festival together uh, or we just simply join together and celebrate our relationship with one another the very act of celebration anchors us in the deeper story of god every moment every time we get into that celebratory perspective recognizing god's provision providence his goodness we are being drawn into his story all right god is actually including us into his grand story that he is weaving over these you know over these millennia as we rejoice we are rejoicing in the goodness and the greatness of god right and when we do that what we are saying is when we practice the spiritual discipline of celebration we what we are saying is that we are willing to be drawn into that story we want to be part of that story because our story stinks <laughs> by ourselves the story of humanity as we see it today stinks you know as you read in the papers on a daily basis we need a redemption we need to redeem our story and we need to be included in the story of god and that is why jesus even came in the incarnation to take us and draw us into his story all right so the act of celebration is a confession on our part if i can use that spiritual discipline confession on our part that we are willing to be drawn into the story the bigger story of god all right so that is one point i'd like to leave you with that uh, every time we do celebration in the name of jesus christ our lord whatever it is when we pray together when we worship together when we sing together uh you know we are being drawn into that story secondly the practice of christian celebration facilitates healing and i think this is a very important point and it comes out to me as something vital you know uh when we talk about healing obviously we are talking about wounds pain suffering you know misery we want healing from all of this isn't it? we are all longing for healing from the brokenness of human life right uh, uh the pain we suffer on uh, or on the loss and the lament we go through on a regular basis but the interesting thing is the the spiritual discipline of celebration facilitates healing and what do i mean by that that our cel- our celebration in the midst of pain and suffering and loss and lament <clears throat> is giving us or keeping alive the hope that we will transcend this circumstance we will transcend the present circumstance of pain and suffering and it is helping us and helping us to focus and pointing us to a time when our celebrations will merge into a moment when there will be no more pain and suffering and crying and tears in other words our celebration focuses on the fact that we worship a god who is making all things new so celebration pushes us and forces us and uh, insists upon us to believe in a god who's making all things new in other words healing he's bringing healing in every moment of celebration right so celebration in one sense for us here today on the earth is bound to brokenness and loss and lament but in that brokenness we are celebrating and rejoicing we are breaking free of the oppression we are breaking free of the captivity that we many times experience one day to experience the fullness of joy the fullness of life the abundant life that jesus christ talks about right as the psalmist in psalm chapter 16 and verse 11 he says let me read to you that verse you make known to me the path of life which includes celebration in your presence there is fullness of joy 
At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So even though we go through the misery of pain and suffering, when we indulge, deliberately indulge in celebration, we are coming into the presence where there is fullness of joy. And there is only fullness of joy in the presence of the Almighty God. You know, so celebration facilitates healing. That's how I would like to put it. If I can quote Richard Harris, another Christian writer, he says, the true expression of Christianity is not a sigh, but a song. Right? So in the midst of our sigh, in the midst of sighing, we are singing a song that will bring us that sense of liberation and give us the sense of hope to look ahead. And finally, if I can quote another author, Joseph Marmion, he says, joy is the echo of God's life in us. Joy is the echo of God's life in us. So in other words, as we celebrate, we are echoing the joy which we will reach in its fullness at the, at the right time. So celebration, the spiritual discipline of celebration is a time of looking back with gratitude for the many provisions of God and looking forward with a sense of hope. And we do that in the present as we celebrate. Okay, so that is how I would like to explain why you know, we indulge in the practice of celebration, even though sometimes in, the, in our difficulties, we might find it difficult to celebrate, but uh, we, 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 we don't celebrate the way the world explains it or the world looks at it. We celebrate in the way God wants us to look at it. And finally, just leave you a Trinitarian perspective even as we believe in a Trinitarian God. You know, as God, as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, is a celebration himself, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit remains in celebration of each other, right? Why do I say that? Because God is love. And love is not just a feeling or an emotion. Love is also uh, a, an act. And that's why some, many people say the love is a verb, right? So the, but the act of loving radiates joy, isn't it? When you love, it radiates joy. Uh, when you hate, it radiates darkness. I mean, I thought that that's an interesting contrast. And if I can just stop for a moment, I remember John, the former, I mean to say the late John Halford who passed away. He was in, visiting in India. He was one of our ministers in the church. He was visiting India and he went to, he went to uh, visit Mother Teresa's uh, orphanage in Calcutta. And he was given a tour where he could, you know, where he was seeing, uh, or rather he was, uh, are shown the terrible conditions in which some of these people were picked up from and lived with open wounds and sores, people who are dying, the destitute. And <clears throat> some of these places where he went to, some of these wards or you know, homes were uh, fairly dark and he was trying to take pictures. And he was wondering to himself if whether as he took those pictures, if indeed those pictures would come out okay because uh, of uh, not having sufficient light. Interesting, interestingly, once he developed his film, he noticed that every one of those pictures came out bright and clear. clear. In his understanding, he thought there was so much love that was being shown there. Perhaps there was a radiation of light some kind of mysti mystical light that permeated that room because of the love that was being shared by these people, you know, with one another. And so God is love and the act of love radiates, well, certainly light, but certainly joy. And joy inspires 
triggers, sparks celebration. That is the reason why Father, Son, Holy Spirit living in the dynamic reality of love is a celebration by themselves. They celebrate each other. And that celebration overflows into humanity, where they then gather up humanity into that celebration. And that, brothers and sisters, is our destiny, finally, right? When, that, when we remain in Christ, he is going to usher us into the joy of the triune celebration, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, as the Bible says, the joy of the Lord or the joy of salvation. That is what I would like to just leave you with, with this uh, spiritual discipline of celebration. So we are going to open it up for some thoughts, some questions, some comments. Uh, uh, some of these thoughts uh, really inspired me as I was uh, looking into it. Uh, so uh, over to you. Thank you very much for listening patiently to me. I hope I didn't take too much time. And if I can just mention, it was lovely to see Pauline joining us and also Surya Murthy. Glad you can be with us this evening. Okay. Who's going to open the discussion for 2022? <laughs> Come on, I want a competition here. <laughs> yes, Anil, go ahead. Yeah, you, you, get, a, you get the first prize. <laughs> I just wanted the prize, so I, I, I'll keep quiet now. <laughs> no. Well, uh, I think also there is celebration in uh, heaven every time a sinner is saved. The angels shout for joy and so on. So that's, uh, that's a great thing. Yes, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Actually, that, that verse, uh, you know, flashed through my mind, but I was not sure where to fit it in. But yes, isn't that wonderful that God and the whole heavenly hosts celebrate uh, when one sinner repents. Uh, that is the extent of uh, joy God feels when people turn to him and join him in the celebration. Yes, thanks uh, for mentioning that. Anna. May, I, may I add a few points? Go ahead, Ravi. Yeah, the celebration fact actually... Uh, you you brought uh, the history of celebrations where it started. Um, they started even before the creation of humankind. Uh, but if you look at the scripture, there are a few things uh, that uh, speak very loudly about the celebrations also, especially uh, in the Old Testament. God asked people to celebrate uh, certain um, uh, events that happened in the past. And uh, uh, it is mandatory for them to celebrate. In other words, to uh, to say these celebrations are part of their spirituality uh, because their spirituality is not as we are talking about now. Our spirituality is more inward nowadays. That's what we consider. Uh, I and my God are connected. But in the uh, ancient world, it was not like that. Their spirituality is mostly related with the rituals and the actions they do. That's how it used to be, and uh, they have they had so many celebrations. If you read the Bible, also uh, the first celebrations we find in the Bible are after Exodus, after the children of Israel were brought out of the land of uh, Egypt, and then God asked them to purposefully to celebrate this particular uh, event. So. Uh, and then he asked the ch children of Israel to teach it to the generations, next generations. Uh, so that's what God instructs. So okay, having said that, I would like to remind one more point, then I would like to connect both. Uh, when we talk about the Trinitarian life, when we talk about Trinitarian um, uh, perspective, we also need to bring the incarnational perspective into it because the doctrine of Trinity is not just limited by uh, three persons, one God and one God, three persons. But this uh, second person of the Trinity has taken human flesh and he is 100% God and 100% man. These are these three things and the divinity of the Holy Spirit, all these three things. Yes, baby. Just give me a few minutes. Um, uh, all these uh, um, truths, they constitute the doctrine of Trinity. And as we look at various subjects also, that should be our, uh, that should be our perspective. So, number one, 
when God asked the children of Israel to celebrate a particular uh, a particular event, uh, like a uh, Exodus, what happened and all. Uh, he was asking them, you know, primarily he was asking them to remember number one thing. <coughs> These are not the people who were left, created and left on this earth, just like the deism teaches. The children in the life of Egyptians, if you look at, they in their religion, they believe gods created the earth in the beginning. They were the gods were living with humans, and then later gods left Egypt. So they are going through all these kind of suffering. So they have to please and uh, find the favor from the gods of Egypt so that they can flourish in their lives. That was the context in those days. So in that, uh, children of Israel were in that for four hundred years. And here he is showing a different perspective altogether. And this God is not away from them, created. He did not leave them, just like Deism and the ancient Egyptians say. But this God was with them and he is interested in their affairs and he is, he redeemed them. He participated his life, he participated with humans and he redeemed them. So uh, the celebration, it reminds them about God. God is with them. God works with them and God is involved in their life and he wants that message to be continued. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, it, it has to be say, uh, shared with the coming generations also. Now we come to uh, Anil's thing. Anil, what Anil said, whenever a sinner repents, there will be celebration in heaven. So in the Old Testament, we see God is involving in humans' life and their the humans are celebrating along with God. And here a sinner is returning to God. And there humans are participating with God in the celebration. So that is where come that's where comes the doctrine of Trinity and the incarnational perspective, where God is involved with the people and the people are involving with God and in all these uh, uh, celebrations. That's how we can uh, see some kind of very good uh, uh, connection. So all these celebrations are always uh revelation uh, they, are, they have some kind of revelation they are some kind of teaching to the world that is the very reason uh or in old testament the children of israel were commanded to celebrate those celebrations unfortunately they have taken the rituals of the celebration and they have totally forgotten the message of those uh celebration so every time the name we have given the names of god in the bible uh zehova rafa zehova zaire zehova Sidakenu. all these names are given after the children of israel underwent a trouble and then god intervened in their lives and then brought victory to them and uh, did favor to them then they have given the name to god saying he god provided so he is a whole zero god heals so he is rafa god brings us the victory that's why he is a jehovah sidakena so such kind of names are given so all those things are are celebrated in the names of god people celebrating god but unfortunately the children of israel have forgotten and we too have taken just as the names of god but they are the message of god that tells god wants to be part of our life involved in our life and that is what his celebration is and he expire, expects that we should participate and celebrate with him and that has been a completely accomplished when jesus has taken the human flesh and came that's where the angels sang celebration of the angels that's that's where we see so heaven was celebrating when God interfered and involved with humans. And in book of Revelation, when everything opened, the, uh, uh, the saints are going to sing a song. It is written in the book of Revelation. A new song has been placed in their heart and no one else knows the song. And they sing the song. So that is the celebration where humans are singing. This is vice versa, where God and humans are completely uh, involved, being involved and celebrating God. So this kind of some interesting... Uh, uh, connections we can see in the Bible. So I just thought of sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Praveen. Uh, yes. I. Uh, uh, it was nice to see Claire wanting to celebrate with you. <laughs> uh, but yes, I like that. I like that phrase you use, you know, celebration is part of spirituality as we see it. You know? And uh, yes, that interesting, that new song. Wow. I mean, I can imagine how that should sound. I wonder who will sing the, the bass and the alto and <laughs> but uh, I'm sure our triune God will join in that singing. Uh, uh, and of course, 
we will be singing. You know, so yes, uh, isn't that wonderful? You know, that that sense of celebration. And like you rightly said, Jesus Christ is the centrality that makes all of this possible and his incarnation. Any thoughts, anyone? While you're, <clears throat> while you're thinking of uh, so many, any comments you'd like to make. Oh, yes, Franklin, go ahead. Sir, sir, please, sir, please explain Romans 12, 15. Can you read it for us? It says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Okay. Uh, you are uh, asking that question from the perspective of celebration, are you? Yes, uh, I think there's a flip side to rejoicing with fellow human beings. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it obviously that is a very human humanistic perspective when you, you rejoice with those who rejoice, you weep with those who weep. But you remember from the context we are discussing, uh, weeping, suffering, pain, joy, I mean to say all of these difficulties we face uh, has a, what do you say, uh, it undergirds or rather I should say joy undergirds all of this. So while you weep, you don't weep with a, with a lack of hope. You weep with those who weep, but you weep with a sense of hope, which one day will turn into rejoicing. All right. But the, to go to the actual context of the verse, I have not read it uh, fully, uh, Franklin, but I would say that we are to connect with people. We have to identify with people in their circumstance. If they are rejoicing, we rejoice with them. We weep with them. But, um, but bringing the context of celebration, we do it with a sense of hope. I don't know if anybody else would like to uh, venture a thought into that. Does that, uh, does that make any sense, frankly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, maybe you have a thought on that. Could you share it with us? No, sir. I wanted you to comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another, uh, another point I would like to bring to uh, notice. Uh, number one is... Um, uh, the ultimate goal why we Christians all we human believe in Jesus we come also is the goal of celebration actually uh, we say eternal life we live, we live eternally and there will be no death okay what will you do if there is eternal suffering <laughs> so we want eternal celebration that's the very reason uh, we are believing in uh, Jesus number two thing is the celebration is the very uh, very nature of God. Uh, that's what the pastor uh, you have you have brought it uh, very clearly. And the creation is part of God's celebration. The celebration cannot complete uh, cannot complete or cannot continue unless we share. Sharing and uh, these that that uh, continues the celebration that extends the celebration. God is complete joy. He is a God. He's a God of joy and his joy cannot be uh, limited and he cannot become more. So what he can do, he can share his joy. And as much as he shares the share, as much as we share the joy, it will be increasing more and more just like love. So out of his love, he wanted to share it. He wanted to share the celebration, extend the celebration. So the creation and everything that we see, it's all part of God's continuous celebrations and we are we are we are in that actually we are part of his continuous uh, celebrations it's so beautiful to see that we are part of such a great and grand uh, uh, desire of god where he wants to celebrate us in fact inv inviting us into that so that's beautiful yes yeah yeah i think well said once again uh, god including us into his story uh, you know that, uh, that phrase makes sense. Uh, while you're still thinking, I uh, just wanted to throw out a... Oh, yes, Vanessa, you had a thought. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so what I, what I think is a celebration is also linked with forgiveness. Because I think God forgives us. That is why he celebrates with us. It's not like us humans uh, that if, if we haven't forgiven someone who has done wrong to us, so we don't uh, go and celebrate with them. 
but god is such a forgiving god that he has forgiven us that is why i think he calls us to celebrate along with him okay so you want to bring in the concept of forgiveness uh you know as uh a or rather important for celebration is that what you're saying yes okay all right anybody have a thought on that how do we connect forgiveness and celebration obviously uh like uh, i think even praveen said uh that uh to bring a relational connect to bring reconciliation to bring together forgiveness is what is actually bringing together uh it's a it's a it's an aspect of reconciliation and yes and that is indeed a point of celebration so uh, i would agree with you vanessa uh, okay i would like to add yes go ahead yeah core of a celebration is participation and participation when we at two level we do we do with each other through fellowship and we do with god through communion yeah in him there was life and life was the light of the man and that is where the whole as pravina said the whole source of celebration comes there so we participate in that one by responding and with each other i think fellowship has to be at the core in order for us to participate in each other celebration so okay. if we are talking about verb then participation participation okay. fellowship has to be at the core of it absolutely <coughs> i agree with you and i'm glad you used the word fellowship fellowship is in one sense you can synonymous to that is a celebration is it fellowship is a is a is a moment of joy so uh, yes uh, very very true and uh, thank you for that comment uh, such a i wanted to add two things um yeah. one was uh, while we were in africa uh, people when uh, in the funerals especially uh of course there was uh there was a sadness that your loved one has uh you know is now with the lord and uh, that you are not with them in the physical world right now that was there but we used to really get uh, we used to be in awe in the way that they celebrated that person's life regarding everything that is concerning about that person they used to celebrate it and you should think and celebrated in such a way like it it didn't look like a funeral you see celebrated you know with with meaning and with with a uh, with the a grandeur it's like he has gone back to where he has come from the lord he came from the lord right the lord made him and now he's gone back he is with the lord and you know so each part of his life or that person's life need to be celebrated as a a giving back as a as an honor unto the lord because he has done that he has done this he has done that he has done this he has done that the whole thing would be about what the lord has done you know more even even more emphasizing is that it is not us who have done it but he has done it and so the your response is celebrating that goodness celebrating that he walked with you in the valley of death celebrating that no matter what he was with you uh and so that was one i wanted to uh, speak about and so when we say uh, you know he rejoices over us is absolutely true at every point he rejoices over us then the second point i wanted to bring about uh, i wanted to talk about uh, was uh, since i am from my main ministry is praise and worship so i'll come at it from a praise and worship angle um Uh, in one of our worship uh, training, uh, our trainer used this particular verse that Uncle Zach also uh, said from Ze- Zephaniah three seventeen. For the Lord your God is living among you; He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With His love, He will calm all your fears. he will rejoice over you with joyful songs and so when she read this and then she said you ask he this verse clearly says that he will sing over us over our lives over 
everything that we are the doubtful the fearful the um, what do you call over the top uh, sentimental over the top emotional name i'm just giving you examples but name whatever it is he still rejoices over us and he sings songs over us so this trainer of us used to remind us you are singing harmonies right but the lord is singing the lord is triune so definitely there must be a a, <laughs> a soprano an alto and tenor imagine his harmony and you're trying to sing to that lord so she used to get, she used to encourage us and tell us if you were to sing to the lord how much more melodiously you'll have to sing it we might never reach that but you are trying to celebrate and give back that honor that he has given over us you know that respect that he has given us recognizing that we are his children recognizing that yes you are a lost cause sometimes but yes i am still i am still in love with you you are so precious to me and so she encouraged us with this that you know joyful songs is what he's singing over you so if your song has to reach the lord your song has to be a sweet aroma in his nostrils according to the word then what do we have to do with our lives the one thing that we can do is celebrate celebrate this life that is given celebrate the friends that we have been given celebrate that we have passed two years of corona virus ka pandemic celebrate that even if you've got the lord has walked us through celebrate that in this form where we are not able to meet even though we would like to meet he's given us zoom you know name it and there is celebration and so life whether we see it we might not take exactly english meaning of celebrate as you know party you know uh, drinks and uh, dancing and all that but nevertheless celebration can also be so uh, when people tell me ori you have to Uh, the lords uh, you know when you exalt the lord it should be very solemn yes there is place for solemnity but it need not be that the lord rejoices with joyful songs it need not be only solemn he he loves every kind of song that you can sing the best song of all is from your heart that we will give him well thank you uh, shanti for joining us and i was just thinking you know yes so true i mean uh, Uh, even if we are tone deaf <laughs> the bible says make a joyful noise <laughs> right and uh, the lord will uh, transform that into harmony i guess uh, yes sir. and right, like you rightly said uh, we have you know we have this practice of conducting a memorial mm-hmm. uh, many times some people say celebrating the life of so and so you know who has passed and so yes all of those uh, points are celebration and and really when we talk about all of this uh, yeah you know isn't it wonderful that we can look forward to the time when we can enter that that uh, the joy of celebration you know in its fullness in its fullness and where the lord himself will join us in the singing and i'm presuming that even the bible study that we're doing is like a celebration right shanti you had another thought yeah i just wanted to add you know when we when the word says the joy of the lord is our strength when we don't have the strength to celebrate then also the lord gives his strength. joy and his strength so that we can celebrate the life that we have yeah. good thank you so much and i think uh, we have more or less uh, finished the hour but let me just leave you with one thought and that is uh, uh talking about celebration especially from uh, the biblical perspective uh and this is the thought i'd like to leave you with selfishness hinders celebration you know but thankfulness enhances celebration right selfishness hinders it while an attitude of thankfulness uh you know enhances it so thought i'll just leave you with those thoughts Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, what a pleasure it is to see most of you. I uh, hope, just hoping that this year would give us opportunity to travel and meet up with so many of you. And I was just thinking, where Vanessa is? She is all bundled up. I'm, I'm presuming you are in the Himalaya mountains, <laughs> right? Uh, but yes, thank you for joining us, and let me request Sachin to lead us in a closing celebratory prayer. Join with me. Mm-hmm.
Our Father and our Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart, with praises in our mouth, with your faithfulness, experience of your faithfulness, of your love and your mercy, O Lord, here we come before giving you thank you in a way to celebrate your presence in our life by responding, by participating to your love, into your relationship with you, O Lord. I want to thank you the beautiful time uh, of the fellowship and Bible study that we had, O Lord. And we thank you, Lord, because each one of us are blessed with the true meaning of celebration, uh, through participation, through your fellowship, O Lord God. And we pray, Lord, that uh, continue, let your Holy Spirit continue to work in each one of us uh, and transform our life, O Lord, through your teaching. I want to thank you, for Pastor Dan, for leading today's session, O Lord. And we submit uh, all of us, um, our families, uh, uh, our, our other members into your hand, Lord. We pray that you keep us safe during this time and be with us, O oh Lord. I want to thank you and bless you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you. God bless you all. And once again, uh, may you have a blessed year. And let's pray for some time when we can celebrate together, you know, in person. <laughs>